Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Well, I've entitled this video, My Kid Needs a Chromebook, and then in parentheses for school, so now what do I do? Well, chances are, if you've got a child and they're going to a high school or a middle school, they may be uh, converting over to like a one device per child initiative, or they may be bringing in laptops for the kids, or it might be a situation where you're being asked to provide some sort of a device for your kid. Um, on my technology channel, I have a lot of questions that people ask me about Chromebooks, uh, mainly because they've been around for a while and a lot of districts tend to use them as a lower cost alternative to a standard PC computer or even a Mac. So if you're a parent or a guardian of a child or just a young teenager and you need to get yourself a Chromebook or get them a Chromebook, um, I think you'll see this video is a good place to begin. Um, first of all, I've got three Chromebooks out here for a reason. All three of these Chromebooks were made in three different years, 2014, 2015, and 2016. I own them all. These are all my own property. And uh, they still all function just fine on the internet. Basically, anything I can do on my MacBook Pro on the internet, I can do on the Chromebook. Um, when it comes to Chromebooks, if you have a required model that you're supposed to buy for your child, if the school's recommending it, I would just say go for it. Make it easy on yourself. Chances are that their friends will have the same Chromebook and the, and the tech service at the high school or the middle school or the grade school will uh, be able to assist them with that. Now, if they just simply say your kid needs to bring some sort of electronic device to school, you need to get a laptop or this or that, I would hope that you would get some minimum specifications. But if you don't even know where to start or maybe you just want to buy a Chromebook for your child, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Okay. First of all, when it comes to buying these things, you can spend whatever you want. You can spend anywhere from, I'd say, 100 bucks up to five or $600 for some of the more higher end models. Um, the models you all see here were, were all purchased for under $250. In fact, this model and this model were purchased used on eBay and actually paid just a little bit more than half price of new when I bought them. I got lucky on a few auctions. Um, don't be afraid to buy these used. If you can pick them up refurbished or if you know they've only been used for a month or two, um, these all come with at least a one-year warranty. And what's cool about Chromebooks is they've got the data manufacturer on the bottom of each model. And so you know basically when they were made. So it's going to make it very easy for you to figure out when the warranty is going to expire. Um, this is a 2014 model ASUS C300. It's uh, it's not an awesome Chromebook, but it does a little bit of everything very well. I mean, pretty much anything I need to do online or that my students need to do online, they can do on this model if they need to. Uh, the model on the right is a Lenovo N22. There's currently an N23 that's already come out, and I'll talk about buying an upgraded model. And that's been a great little computer for me too, or Chromebook for me also. And then right here's my beauty. This is a Toshiba Chromebook 2. Unfortunately, Toshiba no longer manufactures Chromebooks. Uh, this model is from 2015, and that was from 2016. Um, there's some subtle differences between them, but Google basically has a lockdown on the manufacture of Chromebooks. So a lot of what appeals to a customer are just small features that you can get on certain models that you can't get on others, um, like say a backlit keyboard or a glossy screen instead of a matte finish screen. But for the most part, you're going to find them all having the same ports and hookups and connections on the side of all the models. There's kind of a basic standard that the Google requires these companies to follow when they manufacture a Chromebook. Almost every Chromebook that you're gonna find now has USB 3.0 parts, ports on it. It's gonna have a slot for a memory card. Um, let's just get right into some of the pros of the Chromebook. Okay, first of all, viruses are less of an issue, in my opinion, with a Chromebook versus with a PC computer. Um, the fact that you're running a Chrome OS, you're not running Windows, you're not running an Apple's operating system, um, just the fact that you're running the Chrome OS, the kid can still pass along viruses through their email, but the chances of them getting viruses or malware have been greatly reduced because of the Chrome operating system. Again, just my experience, just my opinion, you can disagree with me and that's fine. Another pro about these models, you can get them used for about 100 bucks or 150 bucks, which is really good. You don't have to spend a lot of money if you don't want to. And uh, the other third thing that's really great about them is the battery life on them. Um, all these models that you have right here, they, get, they all get at least six to eight hours. Actually, I get about 11 to 12 out of this one. This guy runs about six for me, and then the N22 can run five to six hours on a battery charge if I got the screen turned up. They really do run really well, um, and I find them to be very efficient machines. Now, some of the cons that you can run into with these is that, you know, they do get a little bit outdated. There's always a new model coming out, and you might be compared to, compelled to buy yourself that new model instead. So, again, if you're trying to figure out what model to get, some basic specifications that I can recommend that you look for. Um, when you get the Chromebook for your kid, make sure it's got at least 4 gigs of RAM. This model has 4 gigs. This model has 4 gigs. This one, unfortunately, only has 2 gigs of RAM. RAM is essentially what makes the laptop run speedy, load programs faster, be a little bit more stable. Try to get a Chromebook 
book that has at least 4 GB listed on the advertisement when you go to buy it. Now I'm going to be honest with you, storage capacity in my opinion is not that big of a deal with a Chromebook. This model has 16 gigs, this one also has 16 gigs, but this model has 32 gigs of storage. So if you're used to your phones, then you already have kind of an idea as to how storage space is going to work. The thing is, most of your apps are going to be stored in the cloud and you're just having more or less the, the basic program to start the app that you're going to be running stored on the Chromebook and not the whole program itself. Now you can start to fill up the small hard drives or storage space areas on these Chromebooks if you start saving uh, videos and pictures and stuff like that on them, but you can also plug in memory cards, flash drives, you have lots of options to expand the storage of these models without having to drop, say, another $100 to go from 16 to 32 gigs. Now one thing that might surprise you just a little bit about Chromebooks is the price on them. They don't really seem to drop off when it comes to the price new. Take this Asus C300. Now, I got this on eBay for about $125 back in August of 2014. It just turned three years old this year. New, these still sell for $179 to $189 on uh, Amazon, depending on the vendor and depending on how you option them out, okay? Not much of a price drop. Three years later, it was still selling for the same price that it was when it was brand new. Now, the Toshiba Chromebook 2, I paid $249 for that, which was the original retail price on it. This one does not have the backlit keyboard. There are some higher-end models that you could get that run into the $300 and $400 range. Um, used, these are selling for $249. Now, unfortunately, they're not selling this model anymore, so you can't really get it new for that price unless you happen to stumble upon one. Uh, the Lenovo... Um, N22, I got that for 100 bucks. I got lucky, I got that on eBay. It had been used for about a week, and uh, the person bought it, didn't like it, and I knew it wasn't that old because they told me the manufacture date was just like a month after it was being advertised, um, or a month before it was being advertised. So it was only about a month old. So I got lucky and snagged that one for 100 bucks. Brand new, that one runs for about 179. Now, Replacements. Let's talk about the replacements. There's already an upgraded model of this that you can buy with an i3 processor. Uh, you can get it with uh, a larger hard drive. So this model's already been upgraded, but you can get a C300 used on eBay for easily under $100. Battery life on them is excellent. I've had mine for three years and the battery still runs just like it was brand new. Now again, the Chromebook 2s tend to have a higher resale value. A lot of people are fans of them because they were speedy at the time when they came out. They've got the sharp HD screen in them. It's got that glossy screen, very reminiscent of a lot of higher end laptops that are out there these days. When it comes to the N22, you can generally pick these up for about $85 used. Brand new, they're a little hard to find. They still run around the $175, $180 range, but there's the N23. And I've been trying to get one of those used, and they have a, the best deal I can find on one is about $180 or $190 brand new um, on eBay and also on Amazon. So you've got a lot of options. Don't be afraid to buy a used one if you know it's been taken care of, if, if there's some kind of a guarantee that comes with it. You should be okay. The good thing is there's not a lot of moving parts inside of these things. There's not a lot that can really go wrong, aside from, say, a motherboard failure or uh, some sort of keyboard issue or a battery. Whereas with a traditional laptop, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Now again, the nice thing about this is when your child has a Gmail account or a school provided a Google account, an educational account, they'll log in with it. All their apps are going to be there for them. Everything's going to be saved. The nice thing is if you have a Chromebook and it should happen to die or break or have some issues um, and you go buy your kid another Chromebook, when they log in, all their stuff is going to come back to them. So that's one advantage of a Chromebook versus a traditional PC where you're a little more responsible for your own backups, I would say, in terms of the operating system and, and the programs that are on the machine and so on. Out of all three of these, I, I still love the C300. It still runs great. The fact that I could pick up one of these for like 65, 70 bucks uh, used on, on eBay makes them a really great deal. Heck, I'd even consider buying one new just because I've had such great luck with it. They all weigh about three pounds. They're very lightweight. They're about, well, maybe about two-thirds the weight. Most of your laptops tend to weigh around the four to five pound range if they're a 13 inch screen and they're not a thin and light model. Um, these run just a little over three pounds each. Now, if you're looking at one for education, I really would push an N22 or an N23. The reasons why I really like this model is because you got the 180 degree hinges and you don't have to worry about it stripping out any of the video cables. It has a keyboard that you can accidentally pour some liquids on and it does have drain holes or a drain hole on the bottom. Um, apparently they're easy to repair, but I've never had to do anything to it. It does have this cool camera that will rotate all the way around to the back, which is pretty cool. Again, I use this one for my own YouTube channel. I actually don't use this one in class. Uh, other features, it's got a very rugged design. It's got almost like a scratch-resistant plastic, which is really cool. It shows almost nowhere, and I've been using this one for, I think, a, a year, almost two years now. Um, but overall, it's just been an awesome, awesome little uh, book. Oh, yeah, cool thing about it. I'm just... 
I'm a sucker for carry handles too. Sorry. There's just, you know, there's no other way around. It makes it so easy. I just throw in the back of the vehicle, grab it, take it when I go anywhere. They're kind of like the uh, Panasonic Tough Book of the uh, Chromebook world, in my opinion. I mean, they're not like super duper rugged, but this thing's fallen off the counter like two or three times, and my cat's push it off actually. <laughs> and uh, it still runs just fine. It's had no issues whatsoever. So, Again, just to kind of recap a little bit, if you got to get a Chromebook for your kid, make sure that you're going to get one that has at least four gigs of RAM that would say four GB. And who knows, by the time you watch this video, six could be the new thing or eight could be the new thing. Um, 16 uh, GB or gigabytes of storage space would be the minimum that you're going to want. Most of these all come with at least 16, if not 32, but don't feel like you got to spend an extra hundred bucks to get 32 because unless the kid's heavily using apps and not saving anything in the cloud, the chances of them filling up their, their storage space built into the unit, you know, the hard drive, so to speak, is probably going to be fairly slim. I've used all three of these for years now, and I've yet to use up more than half the storage capacity on them. And I even use them as an educator. Uh, again, price-wise, shop around. There's a lot of different prices on them. Don't be afraid to buy a used one if you know it's been lightly used or gently used, or you know the manufacturer date shows it's not very old. Um, you can still get a great deal on that if you go that route. If you buy a new one, Definitely look around at prices, make sure you check out the different options on them and so on. It can get confusing because you can have multiple vendors on Amazon all selling the same model at like five different prices. That's a problem that you can run into. Um, so really definitely look around when you're checking these out. Don't feel, don't feel afraid to, to check out more reviews online. You know, use uh, CNET.com as a resource or just do basic Google searches. Again, without getting too technical, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these. Uh, really, I don't think you should have to spend more than, say, $200 to get a decent entry-level Chromebook that your kid can use for a couple of years. Um, like I said, these are $180. That one was $250, but that, you know... Just kind of a different model, 175, 180, somewhere around there. You don't have to drop, you don't have to break the bank on them if you want to get one. So again, find out if there's a minimum spec that the kid has to have, and then I'd recommend any of these models to be honest with you. Go for an N23, heck, go for a C300, you know. And then the Chromebook 2s, like I said, they're out of production, so that's pretty much whatever you can find. So that's pretty much it. So all right, guys, that's just kind of my basic uh, entry level, hit the ground and running Chromebook introduction. Um, again, when you use them, it's just like using the browser on your computer if you ever use Google Chrome. It's the same idea, but you've got an operating system that's based around uh, Chrome and the Chrome OS and so on. Oh, and a lot of these will tie in. If your kid has an Android phone, um, there's also the Android store on these, the Play stores on these now, Google Play Store and Android Market and stuff. So a lot of the apps that they might have on their phone could also be compatible with these computers. Viruses really shouldn't be much of an issue for you just in terms of general use. Most high schools that I know of, public high schools are required to run some sort of a filter system uh, to prevent the kids from going to places that they're not supposed to go. You can content restrict if you get into the settings of these models, uh, where your kids go and how often they get to use them and this and that. There's a lot of control for parents uh, in terms of, of just kind of keeping an eye on what the kids do with the computer too. So just so you know, that option is out there for you also. But that is a whole different video. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for today. So thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for coming to my classroom. Just for the record, it was uh, 3.55 when I started filming this video. And even though I'm never officially off the clock when I leave the school building, I'm just basically off duty for my supervisions. All the kids are gone. I'm just filming this before I go home. And want to give you some basic information about Chromebooks. So hopefully I didn't make it too technical. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess the last thing I should talk about, processors. Um, Basically, when you're looking for a processor in a Chromebook, there's kind of an N series that Intel puts out in a lot of these models. Uh, this model's got an N3040, if I'm not mistaken. These two, it's like an N2830, N2840 processor. There's always new processors coming out, okay? Essentially, just go for the highest number that follows the letter N that you can afford, and that's basically going to be the faster processor. I know it seems really simple, but that's uh, that's kind of what it comes down to, because there's like an N3060 that's replaced the N3050, and so on. So just look for that. When you look up specifications on these Chromebooks, whatever number follows N, the higher the number, typically the faster the processor. That's just kind of kind of my opinion from what I've seen. So anyway, guys. All right, so thanks for joining us today. Please like or subscribe. Um, again, you can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm also on Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash TravisP11. Also check out my technology channel, Travis Petushka. I've got some great uh, tutorials over there for Google Apps, and I actually did a one-year review of my N22. Um, but otherwise, guys, I think that's about it. So thanks for joining us today. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe, and you know we will talk to you soon. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.